You'll need two skeins of the Red Heart with Love Premium Yellow or Daffodil Colored Yarn. If you're making your bottom of the crochet duck with the yellow instead of the turquoise blue. Now you can set the head aside. I'm going to show you how to make the body. So you're going to start with the same colored yellow yarn and we're going to start with a magic circle. So just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook Go right under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, make your slip knot, and then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. Then take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, and then you're going to close it just like you did before. And then just turn your work to work into the first stitch in the round. And then you're going to make two single crochet into each stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now we're going to continue making increase rounds meaning that we're going to continue increasing the number of stitches in each round until we have the size we want for the body. So for those that already know how to make the chronological increase rounds, you're going to be making one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch. So I'm going to show you how to start for those of you that don't know what to do. You're going to make the first round will be one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now, for the stitch count, all you have to do is add 6 to the previous round. So, we had a stitch count of 12 on the previous round. After finishing this increase round of one single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochet in the second stitch, we had a total stitch count of 18. So, all you had to do to double check your work is add 6 to 12, which will give you 18. So, all you have to do is add 6 to this last round, 18 plus 6, and that will give you the stitch count for the next round, which should be 24 when you're finished. So now for the next increase round, take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off, and this time you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next round go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off and make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can see how I'm increasing in chronological order. 
I started out with the stitch count of 12 and then for the subsequent increase rounds I started with one and then two, two and then two, three and then two, and now we're in one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. So you're going to keep increasing chronologically in order like I did, one, two, three, four, and you're going to keep increasing until you get to one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch and then come back. This is how your work should look now. And you should have a total of 84 stitches in the round. Then you're going to maintain your stitch count in the round. So each time you pass the yarn marker now, you should have 84 stitches in the round. So go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And now you're just going to leave the yarn marker in place to help you keep track of the rounds because now you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed a total of 14 rounds. So only one single crochet in every stitch for a total of 14 rounds and then come back. After you finish your 14 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, then you can go ahead and fin slip stitch. So you're just going to go into the next stitch over, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops to complete your slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over, and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So this is what my work looks like so far. You can see that I have a nice little cup for the body. And now you have two choices. You can make the bottom with the blue to represent the water, or you can create the same design using the same color yellow and attach that. And then the waves on the blue will just be like feathers with the yellow. So the blue portion is made the exact same way as the yellow portion that I'm going to show you on video tutorial. If you love the blue color that I used, I used Red Heart with Love, the blue Hawaii color. It's really gorgeous turquoise colored yarn. So on video tutorial I'm making the same piece with the same main color yarn. So if you want to make yours like the blue water then you would follow along with your blue Hawaii color or whatever blue color that you've chosen for this part of the tutorial. So we're going to start the exact same way that we started with the body. So I'm going to get you started with the magic circle but we're going to increase to the same size as the body. So for the blue colored water for the bottom of the duck or the same colored bottom for the duck we're going to start with the magic circle. So you either start with your blue color if you're making the water or the same yellow color if you're just making the bottom portion of the duck. So go ahead and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to start with your slip knot, so just bring up a loop. And then make six single crochet into the magic circle. So like I said before, we're starting the same way as we did for the body. This is the bottom portion of the body and you can make it either blue or yellow, whatever color that you want. I'm just showing you again because some people get confused when I just jump to a separate portion. So I'm just getting you started, but it's made the exact same way as the body. So now, after we make the six single crochet into the magic circle, 
you're going to make two single crochet into each stitch around. So two single crochet into every stitch around, which will give you a stitch count of 12. So now you're going to get your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. You should have a stitch count of 12. And now we're going to continue our increase rounds, just like the body. So you're going to increase all the way to one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch. So I'm just going to show you the first couple of rounds to get you started. So you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochet into the second stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then just move your yarn marker up to where you left off and then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now I got you started. I'm not going to continue the rest of the rounds with you because we've already done it for the body, the main portion of the body. So you're going to continue in chronological order. The next one would be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth. And you're just going to keep on increasing until you get to one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch and then come back. So now just like you had for the main body, after you finish the increase rounds, you should have a total of 84 stitches in the round. Then you're just going to remove your, your yarn marker and then make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then we're going to make our first shell in the round. So the first thing you're going to do is just make a single crochet into the next stitch over. So just bring up a loop and then make your single crochet. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch, so you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops only. You have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make one more half double crochet into the same stitch, so just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And then you completed your first little wave or feather, depending on what color you chose. So for the blue one, it would be a wave, and then for the yellow color would be the feathers. So now you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And this is the stitch where you're going to make your shell. So I made a single crochet into the next stitch. Now I'm going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, make a half double crochet, then I'm going to make a double crochet into the same stitch, Then I'm going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. And 
Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. So go into the next stitch and then make a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then a single crochet into the next stitch and that's where you're going to make your shell. And you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. So I'm going to make another one with you. So I made a single crochet. I'm going to half double crochet into the same stitch. And then double crochet into the same stitch. And then half double crochet into the same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. And single crochet into the next stitch. And then single crochet into the next stitch for the shell. So go ahead, finish this pattern all the way around. and then come back. So this is how mine looks when I'm finished. You can see the gorgeous ripple all the way around with the shells that you made. Then when you finish your last shell, you're going to make a slip stitch into that first stitch that you made. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off and bring enough yarn through to sew this bottom portion onto the body of the duck. Now you're going to need some stitch markers to help hold the bottom of the duck when you get ready to sew that on. So this is my stitch marker case from Pastiche Accessories and I have all of my stitch markers inside. So for mine, I'm probably going to need about three of them. So these little stitch markers have little hooks that you can hook to your stitch to kind of hold them so it, you, you can have an even amount as you sew. So if you have a hard time with these hooks, the clasps hooking them, you can also use the safety pins. So the safety pin would also work well and these are really adorable. So I got a bunch of these online. These are animal baby safety pins. They come in a pack of 30. So I got these off Amazon Prime. So those work well too, but I like for this project, I'm gonna be using these little clasps to hold mine together. So now you're gonna go ahead and place your craft stuffing into the body. Don't worry if you don't have a lot of stuffing, you can always stuff it more as you close. Then you're gonna take the bottom portion that you just made and lay it right on top and I'm lining up the two loose yarn ends and then I'm just going to tie a knot and then that would secure this one side and you want the shells on the outside then you're going to take and go across to the opposite side and then just use your stitch marker to hold the opposite side to the body. So now you can see how I kind of staggered the stitch marker to hold the bottom portion onto the body and I did that in three different spots. That way it won't be crooked and you won't run out when you reach the opposite side. You don't want that to happen. So then you're just going to take the long end that you left for sewing 
and we're going to start sewing the bottom portion to the duck's body. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the short loose yarn end and just bring that in to the wrong side so it'll be buried into the inside of the work. And then I'm going to take the long end for sewing and put it onto my darning needle or tapestry needle. Then you're going to take and just line up. You want the shells on the outside. So line up the shell on the outside of the work. Right at the base of the shell is where you're going to be sewing to the body. So you're going to go right into the body at that level to sew it in place. And you can go in and out this way. And don't worry if you don't get every stitch sewn in place. You can make more than one round after you get the initial round sewed in place. So just keep lining it up and then make small stitches for the outside because you don't want your stitches to show. And then you can check to make sure that you're not taking too big of a bite out of the body. And then come back out at the base of the shells. And then when you reach your first stitch marker, you can go ahead and remove it. This is how my work is looking so far. And I just keep lining it up. I'm going to go back in. And then continue sewing it in place until I reach my next stitch marker. So this is what my work looks like so far. And I've reached my last stitch marker. I've already removed it. And I have a little bit left to sew in place. So now what I'm going to do is add my craft stuffing into the body. More craft stuffing. And this is how mine looks after I've added more craft stuffing. So now I'm ready to finish sewing the rest closed. So I'm going to continue just lining up the stitches and completely close up the bottom. Then I'm going to go around again and make sure that it's really sewn in place. So now go ahead and get the same colored yarn onto your darning needle or tapestry needle because after we've sewn the bottom portions in place now we're going to sew the top portion in place. So I'm going to start right where I left off and then come up at the tip of the shell and you want to make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work when you're finished. So then you're just going to take and make small stitches on the outside and then come up at the tip of the shells So you can see I put a stitch at the tip of the shell and I'm going to do the same thing. So I came out and then I'm going to go back in like a stitch over and then come up at the tip of the other shell. And then I'm going to repeat that all the way around. Then when you get back to where you started you can tie a knot then take your loose yarn in, put it onto your darning needle or tapestry needle and just go into where you tie the knot and come out anywhere. And that will bury the loose yarn end into your work. And then you have a nice little wavy bottom for the body. And this is what it looks like with the yellow. And then this is what it looks like with the blue design. So now you need the same colored yarn on your darning needle or tapestry needle. 
and we're going to take the head and sew it in place onto the body. So the first thing that I do is I make sure that I have the back of the body towards the back so I want the pretty design in the front. So this is where I started and finished off so there's a little bit of a curve back there so I'll put that towards the back of my duck. And then I'm going to use the little magic circle at the top of the body to line up my head. So I have the front where I want it and then I'm going to take and place the head onto the body and I'm going to line it up so it's just in front of that magic circle on the top of the body. So make sure that it's facing the way that you want to. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and I usually start towards the side and then I'm going to go in through the body with my needle and then come up and out of the head. Then you want to leave enough of a loose yarn in for tying a knot. Then I'm going to go right into a stitch over from where I came out. So one stitch over where I came out. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go back into the body. And then I'm going to come out in the same spot where I went in on the body. And then I'm just going to tie a knot with my loose yarn end and the yarn. So now I'm going to go back in where I tied the knot and then come out on the head. And for mine, you can see I'm maintaining my head where I want it to stay. And then just go one stitch over from where you exited the head, go back into the body, and then come out on the body. And that's how you're going to sew the head in place. So now that I'm out on the body, I'm going to go about a stitch over, go back in through the body and back up into the head and then come out. And I'm going to use sew that way all the way around. And don't worry if you're skipping a lot of stitches because you're going to go around multiple times to secure the head in place. So the first time that you go around is just to secure the head so that it's not moving and that you have it facing the way that you want it to. So under the head, I went about one, two, three, four, five, about six rounds back and sewed the head in place. And I like where it lays and secures the head. So now for the back of the duck, you're going to take and make a triangle. So you're going to be making two of these large triangles. So just take your yellow colored yarn and then fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. And then you're going to make a chain. You're going to make a chain of 31. I'm just going to show you four of them. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain. Two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 31, and then come back. So after you make your chain of 31, then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, complete your single crochet, then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across and that should give you a stitch count of 30 after finishing this row. So one single crochet into every stitch back across. So now you should have a stitch count of 30 
Then you're going to take and just turn your work. You're going to work into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop. Make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 29. Then you're going to turn your work again, and you're just going to keep repeating this, turning your work, and then making a single crochet into the next stitch over. And then when you're finished making one single crochet into every stitch across, you'll notice that your stitch count will decrease by only one each time. So when you finish this one, this row, you should have a stitch count of 28. So remember we started with a chain of 31, then we had a stitch count of 30, stitch count of 29, now we're getting a stitch count of 28, and you're going to notice that each row will decrease by a stitch count of 1. Because at the end, when we finish our last stitch, we're not making a chain 1, we're just turning our work. And so that's where you get your decreased stitch on the end. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch, and then I'll help you turn for the next row. row. But I'm not going to keep giving you the stitch count because now you know the stitch count should decrease by only one. And you will notice a slant on the edges as we turn and crochet, and that's exactly what we want because we're forming a triangle. So right now we have the base of the triangle and we're working our way towards the tip. So again, I've reached the end. So you're just going to turn your work and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and every stitch back across. So go ahead, finish making your single crochet into every stitch and turning your work and making a single crochet into the next stitch until you reach the tip of the triangle and then come back. So this is what mine looks like so far. I just finished my last single crochet at the top of the triangle. So you have a large triangle. Then when you finish your last single crochet, you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to need two of these large triangles, so just make one more. So now after you finish your two large triangles, go ahead and set them aside. We're going to make the two smaller triangles now. So you're going to still start with your yellow colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot, and then you're going to make a chain of 21. Again, I'm just going to show you four chains on video tutorial. Just yarn over, go through the hook for your first chain, second, third, and fourth. So go ahead, finish a chain of 21, and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 21, you're going to work this triangle, the smaller triangle, the exact same way. So you're going to go into your second chain from the hook and bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 20. Remember our starting chain was a chain of 21. So this first row, when you finish one single crochet in every stitch across, you'll end up with a stitch count of 20. So now you should have a stitch count of 20. 
And again, you're just going to turn your work. After you finish your last single crochet, just turn your work. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over, just like you did for the larger triangle. And then again, you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 19. So it's just like the larger triangle, except that we're making it a little bit smaller by starting with a chain of 21. So you should have finished that row with a stitch count of 19. Then just turn your work and again you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. So you're going to repeat this, turn your work, one single into, crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch across and remember that each row will have a decreased stitch count by one. So when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 18. So go ahead finish your triangle and remember after you finish this small triangle you need another one. So there's going to be a total of two small triangles. So now you should have two large triangles and two smaller triangles. So here's the size differences. And now we're going to sew all of these triangles together. So you're going to have a small triangle on the top and a small triangle on the bottom. And then the two tri larger triangles will be on the side. So for now, take one of the smaller triangles and set it aside. And then take the other smaller triangle. And here is the tip of the triangle with the loose yarn end and you're going to take the tip of one of the larger triangles and you're going to put the two together and then just tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and then you're going to take and sew the one side of the smaller triangle to the larger triangle. So just pull your tapestry needle through and then you can take and tie a knot with the loose yarn end And then you're just going to go back and forth sewing the two edges together. So the smaller triangle to the larger triangle, just one edge. So now this is what my work looks like so far. So this is the wrong side. You can see how it's creating a ridge where we sewed. That's the wrong side. And when you turn it inside out, this will be the right side. So now on the opposite side of the large triangle, we're going to take and sew the smaller triangle. So go ahead and line up the smaller triangle on the other side so that you'll have one smaller triangle on both sides of the larger triangle. And then go ahead and tie a knot at the tip with the two loose yarn ends. Now remember when you sew, you want the ridge to be on the wrong side. So make sure that you don't have a ridge on the right side because that will mess, mess up the look of your duck. Then just take your tapestry needle and go into the point of the smaller triangle and the larger triangle 
and we're going to sew the two pieces together. You can go ahead and tie a knot again. And then just resume sewing. And again, my ridges are on the same side, which is what I want. So go ahead, finish sewing the edges of the triangle, the smaller triangle to the opposite side of the large triangle. So now this is how your work should look. You should have the two smaller triangles on both sides and the larger triangle on the one side. And then you're going to take your other large triangle and then line it up to sew it along the edge of the smaller triangle. So just take and tie a knot again at the point. So all the points of the triangles are together. And now I'm making it so that the ridge will be on the wrong side. So you can see all my ridges are on the wrong side. And then I'm going to sew the smaller triangle to the larger triangle. Then, after you've sewn that edge together, you can take and fold up the last edge and then you're going to sew along the last edge. Make sure that the point is sewed shut too. So this will be the end of the duck, the duck's tail. So you can just take and go through it and just make sure that the end of the duck's tip, tip the duck's tail is sewed shut and you can go right back through to where you started and don't worry about the loose yarn ends because those are going to remain on the wrong side then you're just going to line up the last edge and sew this last edge shut so now you should have all of the triangles sewn together and we're ready to sew it onto the back of the duck. So go ahead and get your craft stuffing and place it into the center. And you can set the stuffing aside for now. And we're going to sew the top small portion triangle on the back of the duck first. Now the first thing you want to do is count from the magic circle on the top of the duck. Count back five rounds. One, two, three, four, five, and that's where you're going to line up the edge of the small portion of the, tri the triangle. And then you also want to make sure that it's straight with the beak, so it's in line and straight with the beak before you sew this portion in place. Then just take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn, and you're just going to go in and out, and you're going to sew all along the bottom edge of the small triangle. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn in for tying a knot. And then just go back and exit the same spot that you went in and then just tie a knot. And then you can finish sewing across, securing the top part of the back portion of the duck. So you just go in and out. And 
then just sew this top portion only and then come back. So now once you've sewn that top portion in place go ahead and leave the long end alone because you're going to come back to this when you go to sew the sides. So for now you're going to drop that yarn and then go towards the bottom of the duck. So the back portion, that back triangle, you're going to line it up, make sure that it's straight and in line with the feet, if you made feet or the beak, if you didn't make the beak, and then line it up just under the shells of the bottom portion of the body, and then you're going to sew that portion in place. So I got more yarn on my tapestry needle, and then after I lined it up, I'm going to sew the bottom portion in place. So you can see that I went in and out and sewed along the bottom portion of the triangle, just above the shells for under the body. And you can go back across if you're taking wide stitches on the wrong side. So you can see on the right side I'm making small stitches so it won't show through. And then you can go back across to make sure it's secure. So now you should have the top portion sewed down and the bottom portion sewed down. Then you can take and place the stuffing back inside before we start to sew the sides down. So now you're going to take and fold the side along the bottom. You're going to fold that triangle end in and then line it up with the shells along the bottom of the body. And then you're going to take, you can also tuck in the loose yarn end if you want to, or you can bury it later. Then you're just going to take the long end that you left for sewing, or the same colored yarn, and just sew the side in place. So you're going to sew it in place right above the bottom of the body. Just go in and out and just sew that portion in place. Then you want to take and tuck the top portion of the side of the triangle in so that it's even with the top of the body. And then you're going to sew along the edge and then sew that portion in place. So you can see how I'm just sewing right along the edge and then I'm going to sew right across the top and secure the side of the body. And then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Then after you're finished sewing, if you have any loose yarn ends, you can take your tapestry needle or darning needle and just bring it in to where you tied your knot and then bring it out anywhere and then just trim it. And this is what mine looks like after I finished sewing on the back of the duck. And now I'm going to show you how to make the side wings.